Titan community, thank you for taking time to learn about the high school expansion, the schematic design, the programming, as well as the total cost. This presentation was given May 24th at both Frontier Elementary and the high school. It's been expanded to include some of the answers that questions that came up at those meetings will be answered as well. Thank you for your time and study. Here is the presentation. This is currently Terria High School with the current entrance and the current library entrance. The light blue are new expansion joints. Here is an expansion to athletics. Here is the expansion to the arts and here is the expansion to the academic pieces, both on that side and this side of the building. There will be an additional entrance in this area as well. This building is our transportation facility and career and technical education. The distance between these two buildings is 100 feet, which is important because of the home that is built by our high school students led by Mr. Larson in partnership with Builders First. The doors that the building or the home comes out of are 40 feet, so the integrity of that distance is critical as we move forward. We had public meetings at the end of February, and we talked about growth, building capacity, and what it looked like moving forward. For more in-depth information about that, I would encourage you to go onto our website, High School Expansion, and watch that public video. Essentially, the school board is a mission-driven organization that has four pillars that we measure growth on, student achievement, engaged titans, community, finance, and growth management. This project dives deep into each of those core pillars that we measure. Our enrollment drives all of this work. We have a statistical model that predicts our enrollment. The gray line is our actual enrollment, and you can see the statistical model has produced fairly confident or accurate student counts within 20 students per year. This model is being disrupted by the accelerated growth throughout the Terria School District. For more information on that, please watch that February video. The board's vision for how our schools come together is ultimately one high school that has the capacity of about 1,200 to 1,400 students, probably closer to 1,200. We will have eventually two middle schools, but that will be 10 years down the road. In the meantime, we don't want to have one huge middle school, so we are going to transition probably in 2026 or 2027 legacy to a five, six building, which will be the intermediate and the middle school, which will be just grades seven through eight as we transition with our growth and never overbuild one building. It's important for middle schools to say, stay smaller, to optimize students' opportunities through activities and academics. Our elementaries at that time in 2026 or 2027, will be Venture, a JK through four, a new elementary, which is on the north end of the city limits of T. The school board owns land just to the north of North Main and to the east of that water tower by the park. Then we will also have Frontier Elementary. Those three elementaries will serve JK through four until we have two middle schools, then they will shift to JK through fives. But this project is about the high school and the high school's capacity. This is a layout of our current high school. The gym, weight room, and locker rooms also exist, but they are not pictured. Green means that these classrooms are used every period of the day except for one. Blue are open classrooms. So we have two open classrooms in the high school right now. The growth for the next two years can be taken care of through using those classrooms every period of the day. We will just have to shift teachers as well as students throughout the day until additional classrooms are built. 
This looks at, at our high school growth projection. The original statistical model is the orange line. We believe the accelerated growth will be the blue line. We know that we have 900 buildings coming in in the, excuse me, we have more than that. We have um, new homes. We take the new homes that are being built by 0.25 and we have new apartments. Opposite of that, I'm sorry, I've said this too many times. We have new homes that are being built. We multiply that by 0.4 and apartments that are being built. We multiply by 0.25 to estimate our student numbers. New growth into the district. 68% of our new growth comes to the middle school, comes to the elementary. 28% of our new growth comes to the middle school. 9% of our new growth comes to the high school. But when what we really see accelerating the growth of the high school is the larger class sizes. A couple of weeks ago, we graduated 120 students and we're bringing in a freshman class of 165. This, um, this coming year, seventh graders will be over 200 when they hit the high school. So the board's long range strategic plan is summarized by the fact that we grow from between 100 and 125 students on average per year prior to the accelerated building permits. We have built 78 elementary classrooms in the last 10 years. As I just shared, we're graduating classes of 120 over the next two years and bringing in classes of 165 and greater. Our sixth grade class, which will be seventh graders this next year, is at 194 and continues to grow. Our high school is already at capacity. I already explained the middle school and how we will transition those buildings. Finally, the high school will be out of classrooms by 2024. I, our high school gym can no longer accommodate all of the events in the district and still serve the academic and activity needs of our high school students. We have concerts throughout the year. Our fall concerts close gyms for two weeks. That's both academic needs as well as activity needs that occur. In addition to the closures, it took 110 manpower hours just for the fall concerts to set up and tear down. So the board moved into the schematic design by identifying the project goals. 1,200 students, safety, security, privacy, supporting community integration and use, making sure there are functional spaces which support learning, enhance teaching, and optimize collaboration. But most importantly, they looked at the core symbol of the district, and this was created in 2003. And it says that academics will be supported by the arts and athletics. And that is what a Titan graduate looks like. So those academics is where we started. This is a look at the expansion. This is a 25 plus uh, classroom expansion that focuses on expanding science, adding math and science labs, which is STEM education, adding additional classroom spaces, enhancing our arts department, as well as our fine arts classrooms and areas. This portion of the building is the second floor. This piece is the balcony as part of the Performing Arts Center. That will be approximately 300 seats. There are additional classrooms that sit on top of these classrooms. There will be an elevator included. When you look at who are the students and what are they gonna use this for? We have really focused on workforce development. We need students who leave high school and enter technical colleges, the university, or go right into our workforce. So how do we streamline that? So Terria High School is very focused on being a major player in workforce development in this area and utilizing your investment to do so. We have added manufacturing, which is our welding program, 
we went from about 15 kids when we started to over 70. And that's in a three year time period. This is the home that is built by Mr. Larson and his team. They produce a home every year that is pre-sold before we even start through Builders First. Our STEM education is leading the way as we're nationally recognized as a distinguished project lead the way in all three elementaries and the middle school. Those kids are coming to the high school ready to explore the sciences, to be part of the workforce in both healthcare as well as agribusiness and agriculture. We're adding agriculture to our high school programming this next year and have added a workforce development grant through the state of South Dakota of over $118,000 to put a greenhouse within our complex. We're focused on tourism and student interest in the culinary arts, as well as supporting junior achievement and goal setting with our kiddos. As we talked about at the beginning, our academics were purposely supported by both the arts and the athletics. So the support piece of the arts and that investment, that investment enhances our band and choir to be a double A, double a size space so that there's enough room in those rooms for the students um, to all practice at the same time as one unit. Also enhance the practice spaces. This is the Performing Arts Center, which is a 1200 seat Performing Arts Center with the balcony showed a couple slides before. This is large enough to host state and regional as we focus on engaging our community, not only in the use of the facility, but in our own economic development. We have strategically placed the Performing Arts Center next to our our um, welding, as well as our building trades classrooms. There will be a garage door, so it's all very close. This m &E actually sits right on top as it's the mechanical um, piece that runs the auditorium. The auditorium is near the art rooms, as well as those set building areas um, connected to technology with the lights, the sound, all of the pieces being well beyond just the performers. It integrates and engages and creates belonging with all students. The Black Box Theater is an educational space which also serves as a storm shelter. There will be two storm shelters in this building. Uh, one is in this Black Box as well as the new wrestling room. So who are our kids and how does this work? This is our sixth grade choir. Right now, they practice split up into two different choirs as they are such a large group of kids as they go through middle school. We look forward to engaging and keeping those kids as they enter high school. We have our one act who earned a superior rating this year, but the superior rating is beyond just the performers like I had shared. It's the setup crews, it's the lights, it's the sound. All of that is run by the students and is practiced by the students. So we send our kids to Canton or other areas so that they can practice on a stage a few times before they actually perform in front of judges. Otherwise they're using classroom spaces and a little bit at the district education center. Our musical, if you missed it, you missed a great performance. That's in the gym. They get to be on the stage for about three or four days or about a week prior to the performance. So that um, would move to the Performing Arts Center as well. Last but not least is the core of the triangle that supports academics in terms of athletics. Right now, the weight room is in this converted storage area. The weight room and cardio room will go from this area 
to converting the current band and choir classrooms and art rooms to become the fitness center. One of the rooms will become fitness and cardio. The next room will become the weight room. The room next to that will be a space for dance, cheer, and aerobics. And then there will be some uniform organization and storage there as well. This is not a new build. There is light construction involved. The existing locker rooms will be expanded. And then the wrestling room, instead of being on the second floor, will be on the first floor. Currently the wrestling room, we have had to cut the mats so that they would fit in the room. This would provide two wrestling mats to spread students out, not only for our middle school and varsity wrestlers, but also for the community engagement with our youth wrestling program, which is well over 100 students. We also have started girls wrestling. And so having their own space in the gym is also very important. The auxiliary gym would be added and would be utilized both for academic reasons, as well as activity after school. The auxiliary gym would have 600 seats with one main court and two fully functional side courts. So who are the kids that utilize this? This is our dance team who took first in hip hop. Right now they practice in the high school commons and if there's events there, they move to other elementary lunchrooms. Our outdoor athletes would see a vast improvement in the fitness, cardio, and weight room area. Our wrestling, we talked about that area as we have state champion wrestlers now um, having room to be safe in a, one area of the room while beginning wrestlers are practicing in another area of the room. We've added softball. Our volleyball and basketball would be different because right now we have a freshman team. We have a um, C team or a JV team and a varsity team. Sometimes we're able to play four games. Sometimes, most of the time we're able to play three games. When we transition to that double A schedule, instead of three or four games, you have a freshman A team, a freshman B team. While the freshman A is playing, you have the JV team playing. While the freshman B team is playing, you have the sophomores playing. And then it follows up in the, with the last game being the varsity. So now you have five different games occurring to engage more student athletes and have their belonging there. When we put all of these pieces together, based on that core principle that the district was built, first focusing on the ac academics and then looking at the arts and the athletics as the support to that core. We put all of these opportunities together and there is your new design. So that's great, but what does it cost? So the district's valuation has increased drastically since the inception in 2003, taxable 2004. Just today, we received our valuation increase. Last year, the increase in valuation or the increase in the tax base was 16%. Our estimated increase to the tax base is 25.5%. So the total taxable valuation is just over $1 billion. This is great news in terms of the bond levy that will be requested. You can see the trend of our bond levy. And what happens is when we add a building, there's a spike and a spike. And there you can see venture. So you can see venture, you can see the legacy addition, you can see that intermediate school, and then it decreases. The more tax base you have, the principal and the interest are a set amount. And that set amount then is spread over more people. So I'm gonna show you three different slides. We use a bonding agency and they sell our bonds. They look at averages across the country and say on average across the country in order to sell the bonds, we're gonna estimate an increase in valuation of 
5%, 5%, 4%. I just told you that our increase in valuation um, is estimated at 25.5% or preliminary numbers show that. If it's at 6% increase, it's gonna cost $92 per 100,000 in your property, in your valuation, in your taxable property. But our numbers are actually a 25.5% increase. So that drops your share to $78 per 100,000 in property valuation. The $78 does increase to 141 because the first year there's only one payment and the second year there are two payments. I'm estimating a 10% increase on our taxable valuation. Our five-year average has been 10%, although I have not put in the 25.5% that I received today. So the most it will increase is 141 dollars per hundred thousand and then it will decrease. That's the general obligation bond. But if we go a little bit deeper, your taxes that go to the school district are the general fund, capital outlay, special education, and the general obligation bond funds. When you put those four together and you look at the net difference from last year's taxes, to our projected, if the bond pass um, 2023 taxes, the increase to the net is $6. If we increase by another 10%, <coughs> the increase to the net change is $50 per $100,000 of property. I've been asked a couple other questions. What general obligation bonds do we currently have and when do they get paid off? So the original middle school, high school, which is our current high school, was the first bond approved. The last payment for the original building is in 2029. The intermediate school, which currently serves as the middle school, the last payment for that is in 2034. The legacy addition, the last payment for that is in 2040. And Venture Elementary, the last payment for that is in 2043. Venture Elementary opened in 2019. I've also been asked, so what happens if the bond doesn't pass? The school board will have some difficult decisions to make. They'll have to look at increasing class sizes above 30 students. We will need to keep our curriculum offerings at their current level and decrease those specific workforce development courses so we're able to offer the standard graduation requirements. Or we may have students on different schedules, either throughout the day or throughout the calendar. <coughs> and we'll need to keep the curriculum offerings at their current capacities. <coughs> Thank you for taking time to listen to this. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. We will be at Teapot Days with a booth with board members, myself and Mrs. Espin. Have a great day.